All right, let's go through some parts. First of all, I am using a stock crank. Uh, my last one had a couple of modifications. I had, I had chopped it. Um, but now that I've switched over to a chain reduction, at least for now, to see how it goes, this is a brand new fully stock crank from a Predator 212. I'm using a black Mamba cam. Uh, this cam is rated to go to um, above 8,000 RPM. Uh, what, what I really like about it though is uh, it has a really wide RPM rate or wide power band. And if you look at the lobes, I don't know if you can see that. Wow, this is really awkward. Uh, they're not very aggressive. They're not pointy. There's a lot of duration. And so um, they're nice and smooth moving lobes. So um, although this engine does spin up really fast, there's not too much load on the uh, on the valve train. Speaking of the valve train, stock lifters, I'm going to reuse mine uh, from the old block. The reason I'm going to reuse them is because um, they're already worn in and I have a feeling they move a little bit better than brand new ones would. So I'm going to just leave those be, they're not worn, but I'll check clearances before I go further. Alright, next stop. Uh, this is a very important component that, I, that I'm using. Um, that I choose to use. You can do this with stock rockers. Um, first of all, uh, this is a Predator 212 Hemi. There's a non-Hemi version and the difference is um, on the Hemi head, uh, which is this guy here, the valves are at an angle um, and the combustion chamber is actually spherical. It's the shape of a sphere. That's why it's called a Hemi. Um, and uh, so this is going to be different from a, for a regular flat uh, Predator. But in my case, I'm using these. Uh, these are from NR Racing. These are uh, chromoly, billet chromoly, machined billet rockers. I don't know how many times you just said billet. Uh, and uh, I did some heat treatment on the very tips of them. Uh, and the reason I have those over the stock ones is because in my head, uh, I am running 36 pound springs, which is pretty stiff. Um, and to go with those really strong rockers, I use uh, these quarter inch. Yeah, these are quarter inch. I think they're designed for a GX390 uh, quarter inch push rods. And these are cut to size, so the tips on them are actually a separate piece from the body. And what you do is you cut it to the desired length you need. Uh, and you press the little end in on one side to finish the job. Uh, once again, these are beefy to hel handle the added stress from the valve train. The Hemi head on the Predator is excellent because it flows more from the factory and it produces more power. Uh, it is more difficult to work with and it is more expensive to work with. Um, I mean, uh, oh, and I forgot to mention, this is also a big valve head, also from NR Racing. And what they do is they go in, they take the stock valve seats out, and uh, they uh, replace them for bigger valve seats. And um, this is a 28 millimeter valve, and that's just a, a stock size exhaust valve for the intake. So that allows the head to flow more. They also do a port and polish on the ports. I'm not going to get into that. I think that pretty much covers the head. Yeah, I'll go into the carb and exhaust stuff later because those are custom. That's not important. Here is something important. I ran into uh, valve clearance issues. So I machined myself a, a half an inch thick valve cover spacer. And uh, you can get them aftermarket. They're, uh, they're pretty cheap. Um, I added an extra pulse fitting right here in the valve cover. Last but not least, uh, well, no, actually, there's a couple of more things. Uh, th this is a crucial part. Uh, this is a custom part, but um, originally this started out as a, a billet flywheel from ARC. This was just a basic full-size one that they have. I've machined the fins off because uh, the propeller has a cooling profile on it because it's for a Monster 185. And... Um, so, so far it's been sufficient as far as I know to cool my engine. Um, and I added also a ring gear for a starter. Uh, this is an ARC ring gear for a GX200. 
I don't recommend anybody doing this if you want electric start. Uh, you can actually put in a crank from GX200 or a crank from a flathead Predator uh, which allows you to run uh, standard flywheels that can have ring gears but uh, that's kind of an advanced thing uh, a lot of those are not uh, billet and the billet one that comes with the ring gear is really expensive uh, I have an arc rod it's an arc billet rod uh, you need you absolutely have to have a billet rod if you want to go into um, higher RPMs and for paramotoring that's pretty much a given you have to do that uh, I do believe this is a standard length this is 3.308 which yes I think it is a, a standard length uh, this piston ring moves rather easily anyway uh, and I do have a stock Hemi Predator piston but what I did is I machined pockets for the valves uh, to compensate for clearance. What I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to try out, try out uh, uh, this piston here, I think. I'm not sure. Which is a stock piston with no machining. Uh, I want to see, because I don't think I have valve clearance issues anymore. And so I'm pretty certain uh, that I'll get a compression bump and a bump in power just by putting in this piston. Uh, uh, and then the glory, my awesome, <laughs> time-consuming uh, project, which is the reduction plate. And this acts as the front cover for the engine. And uh, that not only does it save room and weight and space, uh, this is a much stronger material than the cast aluminum plate, so it makes it stronger. And it makes a nice base for my reduction to work with. Um, obviously, that's custom. Oh, there's more. Uh, I have a head stud kit. The factory bolts are weak sauce, and they're not really all that hardened. And so the thing with these is it allows you uh, to keep the head down under the higher or under the higher pressures, so you don't pop or so you don't lift the head and blow head gaskets. I also have a stud kit that I pulled off. Uh, I got these actually at the hardware store. Uh, this is a stud kit for the front of the engine case to hold the front cover on the engine case. For the same reason, I've actually had the stock bolts come loose one time during flight, and that was one of my, my engine outs. And what ended up happening is I actually spilt all my oil while I was flying, and then the engine started to vibrate, and uh, uh, it stalled. And so I had to do an emergency landing, which wasn't too big of a deal, but nonetheless, I'd rather not do that. Uh, so I have a head, head gasket. This is just a three-layer one. Um, I wasn't really worried about the size. There's different thicknesses. Uh, if you want to calculate your compression ratio and actually head for something, uh, you can do that. Uh, valve cover gaskets. I actually found these on eBay. Uh, the ones for the Hemi head are total bunk. They're cork. The, one, the ones you can get aftermarket on all the websites, they're cork and they're kind of thick. So uh, on a paramotor, there's a lot of vibration and so the, the screws always come loose. And so I don't even use Loctite. I actually switched to using super glue on those bolts. And it's really frustrating because that comes loose a lot. Um, but these are a nice gasket material and they're not very thick. And uh, you get three for like five bucks or something, which is a great deal. Um, I got exhaust and intake gaskets, which I'll replace. Is that all for parts? That was a mouthful. <laughs> Let's move on. Oh my god, that was 10 minutes. Let's move on to tools. Alright, let's get into the required tools. Uh, this project does require one kind of specialty item. Uh, actually, well, I mean, if you consider tor torque wrenches specialty item, that too. But uh, this is a quarter inch 12 point socket that goes onto, uh, what is it, a 3 8 Yeah, three eighths. 
tool, ratchet tool, or uh, actually torque wrench in this case. And this is for the arc billet rod because it comes with these uh, high torque um, little bolts. And so that goes onto that. And here's the deal that goes onto your torque wrench. And uh, you have to have a torque wrench. You have to have a torque wrench to be able to install the rod correctly. Um, if you don't, there's a really high likelihood that the rod will fail due to vibration. Uh, so I, this is just a 3 8 inch drive uh, socket. You cannot do any adapters or anything like that, so you have to have a really short and pretty small compact uh, socket or torque wrench um, to be able to put on the rod. This is a perfect combination, it works really well. Um, what is this, a Pittsburgh or a Craftsman? Not a Craftsman, uh, yeah, this is not a Pittsburgh. So I got this at uh, O'Reilly's then. And uh, this 12 point I ordered from, um, uh, I believe it was smallenginecams.com. You will also need a big torque wrench. Uh, this is for one single nut, which is the nut that holds the flywheel in place. Easy enough. I just have a mil or metric ratchet set. Uh, these long ones are nice. Um, oh, that's, that's really shiny. Those long ones are nice, but you need also the short ones to get into tight places. Um, and actually, the only sockets you really need are 13 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 8 millimeter, and that's it. Uh, I like the extensions. I like the screwdriver attachment or uh, driver that works with the sockets just to speed things up. Uh, you will need. This is actually three quarters. Uh, I think the equivalent is 17 millimeter. Yeah, I think I think it's 17 millimeter for that nut on the flywheel. Absolutely crucial. Uh, you will need stuff for uh, like liquids and stuff. Uh, I like to use Vaseline, but any sort of assembly loop. This is nice because uh, any parts that are small and that's, that slide in that needs to stay put, like the uh, lifters, uh, a little bit of Vaseline holds it in place, it doesn't fall out, so you can actually take care of that. It's gotta have Loctite, especially for a paramotor. I usually use red, but red is a pain in the ass to get out after I'm done with the project when I'm rebuilding it, so I'm gonna try blue this time. It should be just fine. Uh, blue Loctite. Uh, this is not required, but I'm going to use it. This is a ultra gray RTV silicone. Uh, my oil leak came from the fact that um, I had the chain get really tight on one flight. I didn't take into account that everything uh, heats up and everything expands, and so it made the chain really tight. And so I'm going to actually seal it with RTV this time around instead of using a gasket. Uh, you need valve grinding compound. I got this stuff, I'm gonna try it out. I also had uh, tubes of it. Uh, the reason you need that is when you get a brand new flywheel, you actually have to, what's called, lap it to your uh, crankshaft. And what that does is the freshly machined surface inside of the flywheel will take shape of the crankshaft's taper so there's no vibrations and it can't rattle loose. This is a very important step once again. Some people don't do it, but um, I'm gonna do it. Um, you know, thinking about all this stuff, oh wait, I missed a tool. You can get a quarter inch tap. The reason you need a quarter inch tap is uh, that hole right there is from the governor arm. Uh, so there used to be a governor that keeps the engine at 35, 3600 RPM or something like that. Uh, so that's gone. That needs to be closed off one way or another. You can weld it. Um, you can't just stick RTV in there because what will happen is there's pressure inside the crankcase and it might blow it out. It probably won't, but I, don't, I like to do it right. There's also a hole on the back right here. So that's from uh, the uh, shaft that the plastic gear for the government governor runs on. Um, there's one more hole right here that's from the oil uh, level sensor that's on the back of the block, or I guess I refer to it as the back of the block. And I just have a 516 
kind of a wide head screw, machine screw, and then a nut that fits on the back. And what I do with that guy is I just RTV it in place and tighten it down. So, oh, and then uh, just uh, to seal the holes, I use just two really short stubby quarter inch, I think those are half inch long, um, quarter 20, uh, that matched the tap, quarter 20 uh, screws. I say it matched the tap, but I don't think it matches the tap. I got the wrong tap, sweet. Anyway, <laughs> uh, to seal the the, old, the holes for motor shafts and stuff so the block is nice and tight. All right, that's it for the tools. As far as I know, I'll probably miss some and, oh, well, uh, last thing is just some oil. <laughs>